Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on how I use Lego in my classroom to teach protein synthesis. This is my fifth year teaching 7th and 8th grade life science at an independent school in Tarrytown, New York. I also coach my school's first Lego League FLL robotics team. Lego is an excellent way of helping my students understand the science of biology in my classroom. I have several goals when I'm teaching proteins using Lego. I want my students to understand the structure of the building blocks of proteins. I want them to understand how proteins are assembled. And I want them to understand why proteins have the structure that they do and how this relates to their function. Overall, I want them to use Lego to understand the importance of proteins in their lives. I start off by teaching my students about amino acid molecules which are the building blocks of proteins. There are 20 types of amino acid molecules, and they come in different shapes and sizes, as shown here. Some are long and straight, some are bendy, and some have three connections. I also talk with my students about Lego. Some Lego pieces are long and straight, some are bendy, and some have three connections, and we understand that Lego blocks are a great analogy for amino acids. I then teach my students how amino acids are assembled to make proteins. In the first stage, an organelle in the cell called a ribosome takes each amino acid and connects them in a line to form what's called a peptide chain. The peptide chains are then folded into a 3D structure called proteins. In this diagram here, you can see a collection of amino acids that have been bonded together to form a peptide chain. You can see here how the peptide chain is folded left, right, up, and down to create a three-dimensional structure called a protein. And this protein has specific properties based on that 3D structure. Now that my students had a basic understanding of how to make a protein, it was time to use Lego to solidify that understanding. Challenge one, make a peptide. So I start by asking the students to use the following Lego pieces as analogies for five different amino acids. You have lysine, which is green, which is long and thin. You have proline, which is a bendy amino acid. You have glycine, which is a small one. You have isoleucine, which is long and thin again. And you have this alanine one, which is like a block-like uh, amino acid. And then I ask my students, OK, show me that you understand how to assemble a peptide from amino acids. And so one student will take a couple of amino acids and attach them in a line to make a peptide. And then another student will take a different collection of amino acids and make a different peptide. And they'll start to understand the huge variety, the huge potential that you can make all different types of peptides from just a few amino acids. Challenge two, make a protein that can hold a tennis ball four inches in the air. The task is simple. Suspend this tennis ball four inches above the surface of the table using your Lego protein. The first thing they usually do, the students, is they construct peptides. And they try balancing their thin, uh, relatively unstable peptide in the air. And they say, Mr. Lippin, try this. And it doesn't work very well. So they start to think, well, how can I make this stronger? Well. Maybe I can fold the peptide, and they start to fold it. Wow, look at this three-dimensional structure. That's a little bit more stable. Doesn't work, though. What happens next is amazing. The students realize that the peptides that they are constructing are not very strong. In order to make them strong, they start to fold them. They take this peptide and they twist it into a spiral shape. And they can put this spiral shape down, and it's quite strong. And they can carefully place 
the tennis ball on the top, and there you go, a strong structural protein. Other students explore peptide folding in other ways. They say, look at my peptide. What I could do is I could layer by folding instead of twisting, and then what was once an unstable peptide is now a strong protein. And I can place my ball on top like that. Final challenge, make a protein machine that can connect two Lego pieces together. In this challenge, I give my students two brown Lego pieces and ask them to construct a protein that can put them together. Their existing proteins don't work very well. While these proteins are strong, they're not very flexible. They don't have a lot of ability to move and to perform a machine-like function. So they go back to the drawing board. As my students start to attack this challenge, they realize there is an amino acid that could help them, that could give them the flexibility that they need to operate a machine. And so most of them construct something like this. They use the proline amino acid to allow the peptide to be flexible, to open and close. And they can therefore take these two brown pieces and through bending and additional folding of the peptide can force the two brown Lego pieces together. I can then explain to them this is what an enzyme protein does. It doesn't provide strength, it does a job. It can put things together, it can pull things apart, and it needs flexibility rather than strength in order to achieve this goal. Using Lego, my students now understand how to assemble a peptide from amino acids and then fold it into a protein. They understand that the properties like strength and flexibility of a protein are dependent on the types of amino acids used to build it. They also now understand how important the 3D structure of a protein is for the function of that protein. If you want a strong structural protein in your bones, in your muscles, you need a lot of folding to give you that strength and support. If you want an enzyme protein, a machine that does a job like taking apart this molecule into two molecules, you need flexibility. And finally, I hope my students now understand the overall purpose of proteins, that they give you strength and that they allow your body to do jobs. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how I use Lego to help my students understand the science of proteins. This is a list of all the images I've used in this presentation.